So we are going to have a proper read of this fucking article, but we're going to read it after the court hearing because I think, I just think it'll be interesting, you know, timelines and shit in it. Just to start, Theory of Destructural Association submitted November 10th, 2010, accepted November 25th, 2010, okay, 2010, 20, well, 2011 onwards, Theory of Structural Association has been becoming the main form of understanding of what DID is around the world, okay, so Ono van der Hart was working on this Theory of Structural Association in the years leading up to 2010, right? It's a harrow. So rude. Complainant has been in the care of the defendant from August 1995 until December 2015. 20 years under one therapist or whatever. The complainant and statement of complaint of complainant. The complainant blames the defendant for Incorrectly mistreating her from 1995 till 2015. <laughs> Being guilty of transgressive behaviour. Breaching professional secrecy. Keeping the files incorrectly and badly. Ooh, this is leading well to somebody who's written the world's most regarded theory. Delivering unfactual reports and not adequately referring her to another therapist. Those are complaints A to F. Now, complainant A, or rather complaint A, has been broken down into these sub-complaints. So, incorrectly tr incorrect treatment from 95 till 2015 is broken down into these subcategories regarding her medical history, regarding symptom inventorization, ergo the inventation of symptoms, complaint regarding diagnosis, complaint regarding provided information about the treatment, he withheld knowledge of treatment, regarding the actual treatment agree agreement, regarding the treatment plan, regarding the failure to repair acting, regarding the failure to repair acting inadequately. Um, Okay, so some bits of this are going to be a bit tricky for us. Might need a bit of us interpreting what it says because this is all being translated from Dutch into English. Okay, this isn't. This was never written originally in English. This is a translation job. Okay, and thank you very much to Himira for doing work finding this for us. And I think did, did you do this? Trans you didn't do this translation yourself, did you? Though? But you did. You did all the searching of it for me because I didn't even know where to begin searching because all the news articles were in were in Dutch. You, you did do some translation. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's a huge praise, everyone, right now to Hamira, basically, for making what we're looking at today possible. Because um, I was trying for ages to find this and couldn't. Um, so, huge, huge, huge grats. Subcomplaint regarding the inheritance. <laughs> Subcomplaint regarding the failure to use general principles of psychotherapy for recovery. He used his own principles. Subcomplaint regarding inaccurate or lack of treatment. So whenever people are saying to me, yeah, but you're not a professional, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, but the professionals just do whatever the fuck they want and then write theory based on that. So why shouldn't I? <laughs> I'm not like at least trapping people in my home and abusing them means organizing like inventory in this case i'm pretty sure okay so um sub complaint regarding symptom 
organize it. So the the list of symptoms, the collection of symptoms, right? And his and probably his oh his invent so his recording of said symptoms um was not being done correctly. Cool, guys. I am so grateful to have you here with me for this, doing this. So please stick about as well, because I feel like I'm going to need your help in, in going through this correctly, okay? So I'd appreciate everyone sticking about and using their brains today, not just listening to Grandad Waffle, calling me out if you think I'm discussing something inaccurately or incorrectly. Please, we want to... We want this to be right, you know? If we want to make a point we need to be correct i do agree with that some people were saying that to me the other day and i agree with that well if i get something wrong i will apologize and amend even if people don't hear it <laughs> anyway i need a book <laughs> anyway uh sub complaint regarding inaccurate or lack of treatment uh, complaint regarding uh, dealing with the therapist's absences. Therapist just not showing up to appointments. Yeah. Yeah. As I say, big thanks to Amira. Big times. Huge times. Um, sub complaint court regarding calling in colleagues. <laughs> uh, and complaint regarding whether therapy should be continued or not. And a complaint regarding stopping of the therapy. Complaint B, which is being guilty of transgressive behavior. So that's just the mistreatment. That's the basic shit. Then we get to the, the real shit. Complaint B, transgressions upon her. Criminal transgressions. Subcomplaint regarding the therapist's counter-transference. Okay, counter-transference is, is something within psychology and psychiatry that Remy Aquarone espouses as being a very good thing, actually which is the therapist's uh, emboldened attempt to place their way of thinking and their state of mind upon the patient. And in some ways, I can attempt this through teaching. I, I attempt this sometimes when I say, you guys, no, don't think about it that way, think about it this way. But I do that through the process of DBT, dialectical behavior therapy, where I encourage different ways of thinking about things through the use of language. I'm not actually trying to get you all to think the same way as me. I'm just trying to get you to address the language you use sometimes and to see how that can shape your way of thinking things. You know, the old instead of uh, I've had a bad day, say I felt a bit bad today or I felt bad today. Instead of, I, you know, because then instead of the day being a bad thing, it's just you felt bad on that day. The whole day wasn't bad. You felt bad on that day. Um, whereas counter-transference is, yes, definitely inappropriate. Um, and definitely, definitely a thing. And it, again, as I say, it's a thing that Remy Akron has written a blog post or an article talking about the positives of. It says the board and sometimes the committee, both those in reference to the disciplinary board. Thank you. Yeah, it's again, it's like I I discuss language changes and try to help people use different language, which can help you understand things in a different way. And that can change your way of thinking. Yes, but I'm not trying to get you to become me. Whereas counter transference is far more about hypnosis and the therapist trying to implant a part of their personality within the patient effectively. It's very strange. Um, from what I've read on it. I may not be describing it correctly because, again, my reading on it mostly comes from memory Akron. <laughs> I only know about it because of Remy motherfucking Akron. So I'm actually cracking up to see it come up here, to be honest with you, you know? It's obviously a thing that these, that Remy and Ono van der Hart, when they were fellows, uh, fellow board members of the ISSTD, were obviously discussing together back in the day. Very interesting. And Sinuson's spoken of it. Subcomplaint regarding pathologizing. Uh, Subcomplaint regarding the therapist's identification with the client. Subcomplaint regarding the therapist's defensive behavior. Complaint regarding 
attraction and repulsion by the therapist. Complaint regarding the therapist making her a dependent. Making her dependent, rather. So complaint regarding physical contact. Complaint regarding performing alternate acts. Complaint the therapist has a client buy rugs for his therapy room. Complaint regarding marriage to the therapist during therapy. Legalese with that, they'd they literally do trip. Yeah, that's a fact. That's actually a fact. Sometimes it's to make it better, but a lot of the times it's to obfuscate. It's not to simplify, it's to obfuscate, to make cloudy. 20 year therapy relationship marriage. Oh, but it gets worse. The complainant had clarified her complaints and sub complaints with, among other things, reports of therapy sessions, email correspondence. In support of her views, the complainant has also submitted an overview of cards, gifts, and gifts she received from the defendant. A USB stick with sound fragments of messages left by the defendant on her answering machine. A fragment of a therapy conversation, and a fragment of a so-called three-way conversation with, and a written statement from, F, who is involved in the treatment, uh, as a consultant. Who is F, I wonder? They use letters to avoid them being identifiable, but it would be either Neil House or Kathy Steele. Is the point. It's Neil House or Kathy Steele. The two that appear in every they they appear in publications all the time as well. I've not yet done a deep dive into either of them properly. I just they I remember they're they're in they're both mentioned in my history of the ID master text. Um that, that Holly wrote. Uh, so they're both in there. Um, I say mine. Oh, it was both of our work. It was 50 50. Um, I wonder if they snuggled. <laughs> <laughs> Therapist making her a dependent. This shit goes all the way back to Sybil and Dr. Cornelia Wilbur. Yep. And Colin Ross. And, yep. Yep. In addition, under the heading Others, the complainant provided a description of the consequences this had for her. The complainant has elaborated and documented each of these points in detail. Section 3.2, the complainant has further argued that the long treatment time, the seriousness of the situation, and the circumstances that everything and the circumstance that everything has taken place in the treatment relationship uh, of 20 years is interrelated and influences each other should be grounds for the board to deviate from Article 65, Paragraph 5 of the Individual Healthcare Professions Act to assess the entire treatment period of more than 20 years. So yeah, there's probably some, this Article 65, Paragraph 5 probably decrees that you're only meant to look at a certain period of time when it comes to malpractice, and they're arguing that due to the nature of this serious situation, the circumstances that everything's taken place in, they need to examine the whole 20 years. Um... Yeah. Again, Angie, this is why I so often say I'm not that interested these days in going after the Chloe Wilkinsons and shit of this world because conspiracy therapists are far more dangerous. The conspiracy theorists and the the the, the wannabe grifters and the, the, the attention grabbers, yeah, they're annoying. Yeah, they're funny and annoying on TikTok and Twitter. But they don't and they matter a bit, they affect discourse, but they get their discourse from a source. There's a reason why all of them quote shit. It all comes from places, and the places it comes from are what we truly need to look into. Um, and that would be... It sounds like some version of the Statute of Limitations. It does sound like some version of that, yeah. Um, and that is what I want to spend my time on more. It's what I try to spend my time on more, the Colin Rosses, the, the, the Ono van der Hearts. Because by destroying... The professional career of these people only that way can we rebuild the diagnosis of did from the ground up they're fascinating to the therapists but also trip there's a double-edged sword 
These therapists are celebrities in the DID world. Again, Jess didn't feel worthy. Uh, she had a conversation with uh, Remy Akron and she didn't feel worthy of making the video out of it in the end. And that's why she went to Mike Lloyd instead because she had a hero complex for Remy Akron. So Remy was literally like a father figure. Chloe too. Valerie Sinison too. Again, Remy Akron's two former patients uh Catherine Livingston and Sue Richardson both have now worked for him for the last 30 years. They start out as his patients and they end up becoming cult sub leaders. And so it's only by destroying these people's careers can we rebuild this correctly. So This is what I've been saying. Lo, you weren't here for it, were you? Yes. 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 And one more yes. It is what I have termed. I it's not it's not an original term. I didn't come up with this term. But I am using this term for DID uh on the internet. And regarding these people, not DID as a whole diagnosis, please don't think I'm saying that. I'm not invalidating anyone here. I really am not. I am invalidating these monstrous cunts and the cult, the pseudo cult that they operate. The pseudo cult. It is a it is a godless, uh 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 figureless and centerless cult. They don't want to be the figurehead of their own cult, but they want others like Chloe to be pseudo cult leaders to funnel people, as Tripp says, to funnel them in, spread their gospel. And then you, if you're here in the UK, who do you go to? Who do you go to here in the UK? Valerie Sinison, Remy Akron, or Dr. Mike Lloyd. You have three fucking choices for your treatment. You might, I mean, sure, you might get, a th but the well-known, the well-known well choices that when you Google who you can talk to, you'll get those three. So, Joan Coleman, Colin Ross. <laughs> yep, there's the other names. So it is a, it is exactly what you say. It's like a cult in some ways, because I believe in earnest that in all but title, figurehead, and spirituality, but even though there is a lot of spirituality invested in it still too, and a lot of angles of the ID treatment in particular, but basically minus figurehead, it's a cult. We see cult branches forming with with you know the same way cults have this pyramid or umbrella or tree like structure we see the same within did um communities creators going on to inspire other create smaller creators going on and it's always the same thing you hear i've read the message a hundred times on twitter i've seen it said a hundred times in video you know it's to debunk the stigma and they always say the same lines you know there's that same like set of lines that we see said and repeated almost copy pasted identically all over the place you just need to educate yourself better you you know we're be we're fighting the stigma and spreading education because actually did is as common as one to three percent and all the other shit that makes me want to literally rip my face off it's it's cult messaging that's why it has that's why you never see them talking about anything scientific. Not really. You never talk, hear them talking about the actual brain mechanisms or functions that are occurring. That's why they always use vague analogies and terms of phrase that describe it without really describing it. 
because that's what makes it easier to understand and believable and engrossing and engaging because nobody's actually people aren't that heavily interested in hardcore psychiatry and science and chemistry not not in the mass population they're not so if we were to truly be addressing DID and analyzing it and talking about it and and studying it and treating it the way we should be the rhetoric around it would not be nearly as fun and interesting and there would not be nearly as much interesting and there would not be an opportunity for this cult If you never make a concrete claim, it can never be debunked. So that's why you don't talk about the hardcore science, right? That's why you talk with, that's why we see every conversation coming down to rhetoric and think about it like this. It's always think about it like this, the way I understand it, instead of being what it is. You know, we've seen how many people have made a video being like, what is DID? So today I'm going to tell you what DID is. The way I, I understand it is think of yourself as being like a driver in a car and you're in the passenger seat and, you know? Get one free. In the statement of defense and at the hearing, the defendant took responsibility for what did not go well in the treatment relationship. At the hearing, he broadly endorsed a significant part of the complainant's complaints. Defendant has submitted a different view on a number of points, which the board will address insofar as necessary. In the statement of defense, uh, the, defend the response has come to the following reflection. <laughs> Defendant acknowledges that he, that he allowed the treatment relationship to escalate. He has not acted professionally. He should have ended the treatment relationship earlier. He should have limited the complainant. He failed to do that, and he deeply regrets that. And this was happening whilst he was writing his theory of structural dissociation. And this woman has the idea. And it was a, the book, and the theory, I'm pretty sure, is all based on his treatment of her. Considering, based on the fact that he was treating her like seven hours a day, 365 days a year, 20 years. She's the only patient he saw. So he's basically formed his entire theory of structural dissociation off the back of one woman that he abused. Anyway, carrying on. Joe Rogan used to be respected, and he still is respected, by the right wing. No, Joe Rogan didn't always, he wasn't always a quack. Joe Rogan is honestly still the same great guy that he always was. Take it easy, Aiden. Enjoy your work. Well, you know. Play me at work again and confuse your supervisor. Uh, <laughs> Joe Rogan is, like me, honest about the fact that he's an idiot. He moved to Texas and got brainwashed by right wing trolls. He's an idiot. Because he's an idiot, he's not a bad man and has had some of the most incredible podcast episodes and conversations and his ability to get more intelligent people than himself to simplify complex subjects so that he can talk to them about them is incredible. He's like the perfect empty slate, blank slate for people to put themselves onto in their podcasts together. He's really good at that just it's a problem when he keeps talking to Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro and other quacks day after day two bears one cave what's that? <laughs> that sounds kinky <laughs> part of the therapy was also complaining about his marriage <laughs> The marriage, to, yeah, that's right. He didn't just marry her, did he? He didn't just marry the patient. He straight up divorced his wife to marry her, didn't he? And she, I'm pretty sure, left her partner as well. Ooh, that sounds good. Um, right. Defendant has pointed out that a number of complaints from the complainant relate to situations that took place calculated from the date of submission of the notice of complaint more than 10 years ago. 
so that the complainant cannot be received in those complaints. So his only defense for some of the allegations is that they happened more than 10 years ago, so he doesn't have to answer for it. This is the man that wrote the entire theory. This is the theory of structural dissociation. This is the person that we see them all quoting online literally every day. I know, and a load of others. There's a very famous, there's a Guardian article where something similar happens to, to a different person. It's happened to a lot of people. There's a pattern. For reasons of procedural economic nature, this is the judgment, the Commission will first consider what happened in the 10 year period prior to submitting the notice of complaint and assess what this should lead to. The start of this 10 year period, as they are ignoring the 10 years prior to that, the start of this 10 year period, the complainant had been under treatment by the defendant for approximately 11 years. So the start of the complaint that the court is even hearing, they're ignoring the first 11 years. Until December 31st, 2013, the defendant was employed by G, where he also treated the complainant. In the period, Kathy G. Steele, I'm pretty sure. In the period from January 1st, 2014 to December 31st, 2015, the defendant worked in his own practice, H, and treated the complainant there. Oh, Ben Shapiro is totally adorable. I think he's adorable, even though he annoys me. But he is adorable. With regard to the complaint, with regard to the complaint uh, referred to under section 3.1 sub A, a concern, uh, concerning incorrect treatment, as further elaborated on in the associated partial complaints and subcomplaints, the board considers that the defendant has expressly acknowledged that the treatment relationship was defective. In short, there has been a derailed treatment relationship. The defendant has acknowledged that on many points referred to by the complainant under 3.1 sub A, at least in broad terms, he did not act in accordance with the professional code of psychotherapists. Viewed against this background, the lecture will suffice with a brief descriptive account of what happened in the treatment relationship. The complainant has been in treatment with the defendant for more than 20 years. Certainly in the last 10 years, the years that are in any case at issue here, there has been an extraordinary and unusually intensive contact between the defendant and the complainant. What are you doing? Depression mode. Thanks, Lex. You beauty. Using that freebie. Yeah, guys, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you get Prime subscriptions and can sub for free. Never forget that. For those of you who have had gifted subs, though, those of you who've got your subs for the first time at this month, you know, uh, if you've got Amazon Prime or you know anyone with Amazon Prime, you just have to link your Prime account to your Twitch account. There are, if you go on the Twitch homepage or if you Google, if you Google Amazon Prime Twitch, you'll find a website and you just click link accounts. You log into your Amazon account, you connect it to your Twitch account. Um takes about two minutes to do doesn't take long to do um and that lets you subscribe to me for free now what's amazing about that is i still get the exact same benefit as when you pay real money so when you pay real money i think here in the uk it's four pounds in america it's five dollars half of that goes directly to me the creator and to which take the other half now with an amazon prime subscription they're already getting your money from your Amazon Prime subscription. They don't charge you anything extra, but I still get the same amount as money of money as I would if you were paying otherwise. So it's, if you've got Prime already, it's the logical thing to do. Now, I know some of you are subscribed to other people with that, and that's fair enough, but some of you are only sub to me. So if you have, yeah, exactly, that's how you're subscribed. If you have Amazon Prime, um, which I know lots of you do, because lots of us do these days. Uh, please use that um, next month, because, like, why not? And you don't get adverts, I get money, you don't pay money, everyone's happy. It's the ultimate. It's the ultimate. Right. I need to write myself like a list of things that I need to mention every stream without failure. I need to, because this is the problem. This is my fault, to be honest, as a streamer. I should, other streamers will mention this stuff, not just daily. Most streamers will mention 
prime subscription paid for subscription adverts that shit on the hour every hour in fact any of the affiliate streamers if they have an affiliate deal no not affiliate i'm affiliate if they have a partner deal with twitch if they've made twitch partner part of their contract is they will remind you at least once an hour that you can subscribe using amazon prime or money ads blah okay it's literally in their contract so the fact that I don't even think of doing it once a day is bad. So I need to make a note to remind at least once a day, I think. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot sometimes, guys. I thought I, th I thought there was like a bot that was meant to remind people, but I don't know if that's still working. Who knows? You know, chat bot that reminds people. And to remind people. I always note, Clary, I remember the daily idiot reminder. You know, I remind people, I'd say at least twice or thrice daily, I'm an idiot. Yo, yo, yo. What are you nicking? So. Complainant has been in treatment with the defendant for more than 20 years. Certainly, in the last 10 years, the years that are in any case at issue here, there has been an extraordinary and unusually intensive contact between the defendant and the complainant. That's my desk now. I just want to turn like the ironing, the uh, the, the the iron holder, because it's got like a holder for the iron itself. I want to turn that into like a cup holder and it'll be perfect. That or like a bin bag holder and I can just like pop bin through it, pop, pop stuff. It'll be, oh, epic. Epic. <laughs> Okay, well, lots of hamster mouth sized splits in it. Hmm. <laughs> I trade it for your desk. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> for example. For example, from 2012 to the end of 2015, there were two to three sessions a week. Sessions were not limited in time and sometimes took five and a half hours at a time. You can't trade someone for their own stuff. You can once you've got it in your room, though. See? That wasn't his argument for not doing the trade, Clary. <laughs> That's that's tacit uh, acceptance that the ironing board is now mine, is now my desk. An ironing board no longer. That was tacit approval. As a as a lawyer, I'm catching you out on that one. There we go. Contract signed. That's written agreement. We all saw it. Multiple witnesses. Perfect. Done. <laughs> 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 just in the morning when I like I haven't turned the lights on yet my guitar being so me I'm drugged up as fuck and I'm knocking everything over and I'm just like ah! <laughs> <laughs> right so sessions sometimes took five and a half hours at a time in addition there was almost daily telephone contact during the entire 10 year period during a very long period there were two telephone contacts per day lasting at least between 12 and 15 minutes at the least. Home visits were also made. In addition, the defendant sent the complainant emails with very personal and on the relationship, on, with very personal uh, information and, on, and emails regarding the relationship between the two involved uh, texts. He also sent over 200 cards. Very personal and... Oh, right. So this is saying he also sent um, personal emails about his relationship with, I'm assuming at this point, possibly still his wife or maybe with her, I'm not sure, but about some personal relationship, not about anything that a therapist and client should be talking about is the point. Um, and also via text. And he also sent her over 200 gift cards, letter cards with, with such, I'm assuming it's about their relationship. They're talking about romantic texts and emails there i think sexual probably and stuff too 
Uh, the defendant gave the complainant a significant amount of CDs, amount of gifts, including CDs, books, and jewelry, and recorded uh, texts as, of, as of aforesaid on the complainant's answering machine. This, in short, to show the complainant that even when he was abroad, he thought of her and he did not leave her alone. Furthermore, the defendant spoke extensively with the complainant about problems that concerned his person that concerned him personally, including problems he was including problems uh, of the defendant in the past. It, yeah, including problems that he was having with his marriage, his marital problems that were existing at the time as a result as a result of the intensive contact between the defendant and the complainant. So yeah, this is what Hamira was saying to us earlier. They, the board reviewed evidence showing that his marriage with his wife fell apart because of how much he was calling and messaging this woman. No, nah, yeah, you're not going to make me buy an actual desk. This is war now. <laughs> Ugh, I'm so sweaty today. Ew. I need to put on my deodorant and change my top again. Some days I just sweat like a monster. I know what it is. It's the under. I know what it is today. Anyway, it's the underfloor heating. The underfloor heating, where my feet are super toasty. They've got a nice breeze coming over them now, so I'll cool down. But then I'm gonna cool down and I'm sweaty, and it's just ugh, grim. <laughs> so yes, third outfit change. Second outfit change of the night coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, except the. Mm, yeah, no, it will turn the hallway into a furnace. <laughs> oh. uh, furthermore, the defendant often ended therapy sessions with an embrace. He cuddled her to end the sessions. This behavior of the defendant is certainly not in accordance with what is customary and accepted within the profession. The relationship that arose between the defendant and the complainant is a relationship that went considerably further and was more intense than indicated and usual in order to be able to arrive at good treatment. This person, this woman with DID, or she actually argues these days, this, this is the point of also part of this, she argues that she doesn't have DID and he convinced her into thinking she had DID. She didn't have it before seeing him. She doesn't relate, she doesn't, he he he, is, he gave her iatrogenic DID and married and abused her for 20 years um, until she got free. And it's off the back of that abusive relationship. We have to keep all of this time setting in mind when we later read Ono van Dart's Theory of Structural Association that was accepted and released in 2010. Right? We have to keep it all in mind. You're right. I. It's not just a red flag, mate. It's literally, it should be unheard of. It should be unheard of therapists complaining to patients about anything. You can bring up stories or, or anecdotes from your life or things to help them understand things, sure. But just to be complaining about something to your patient, how fucking dare you? Go to therapy if you're a therapist doing that. Get get help. <laughs> That's called inflicting your problems on your patient. You know how fucking dare you? They, you know, I was saying the other day, it's never the right time or place to share, which means it's always the right time and place to share. You know, it's not the right time and place to share. Actually, I think we've found the place when you are the professional giving people help. Part of the reason. I will never claim to be a professional. I can't help, you know, I do share, I do, I, just, I do trauma dump on you guys. And I say to you, you better fucking stay. <laughs> you know? I'm not a professional. I'll never claim to be. Unless someday I should get a degree and become a professional and then I would claim to be. But I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> but as a professional, um, I think the place, I think we could all agree that the place, the time and place that is inappropriate for somebody to wiggle fingers trauma dump. And I still, I use it because I don't know a better 
term to encompass the feelings but i also hate the term trauma dump i again i've been using it i hate it as a term it feels offensive you know it's like the difference i have between meltdown and overload in regards to autism there needs to be a better term than trauma dump you hate the term trauma dump too yeah I, we, we use it because we don't know what to use right like what what sums up the feelings of trauma dumping but without it coming in an offensive way because we don't mean it like i want you guys to trauma dump but i don't want you to trauma dump if that makes sense i want you to share about your trauma but that's a long thing to say if that makes sense so people are going to have to come up with a shorter term because people are lazy i'm happy using the long term but people will always come up with a shorter term because they are lazy uh so what do we think people will use that is a polite way of saying trauma dump an appropriate way of saying it because i hate it yeah it implies you're dumping it on somebody and so just trauma share trauma share trauma share i basically always encourage do trauma share in in this community and i think the one place a person should never trauma share the one place in time a person should never trauma share is that person is i'm not just going to say psycho anyone in the medical field to any patient because when nurses in A&E, start talking about how hard a day it's been and how tired they are to their patients and around their patients. That's fucked. Shut up. Oh my god, do you know how uncomfortable that makes your patients feel? Your job is hard as shit. I get it. But can we not vent about how hard life is actually to the patients? It doesn't raise empathy. It doesn't raise understanding. It unnerves and scares Did I download this earlier? I think I did. I don't know. No, I didn't. Sick. <laughs> yeah. Don't you dare make a patient feel like a burden. Don't you dare. In that one situation, I think, get into the nitty gritty or whatever, you know, it's not, it's not the time, the one time and place not to do it. I think we found the time and place after me saying the other day, it's always the time. It's always a never. Well, actually there's a never, never. <laughs> and that never, never is when you are the professional treating someone in any medical field. Doesn't matter if it's psychiatry, nursing ambulance crew part of the job and the hippocratic oath and shit is meant to be part of bedside manner and stuff anyway it just gets more and more forgotten and i understand why their jobs get harder and harder and more and more defunded but doesn't mean i can't complain about it either to be honest just because they have a hard job doesn't mean i also can't say that i still wish they could do aspects of it better because when we say stop criticizing the nhs stop criticizing them they're doing the best they can well, that's how they stagnate and become awful. Hate that angle. No, criticize the nations and the things. Criticize the NHS because I love it. Criticize the UK all the time because I love it. This is something I was talking to one of my mates about the other day on the phone. I was realizing that we, we're probably in a lot of ways more patriotic than most patriotic Brits. People who'd call themselves patriot, patriots. Because I want to see this country do better. And I believe it can. Unlike these fucks who just want it to stay the same, which means bad. Like, how is that patriotic? Wanting to stagnate. Why, yeah, why is conservatism, why is patriotism the same as stagnation? How do they not realize it? Diaries of Junior Doctor uh, is brilliant. I know of that. Yeah, I know that that pissed off people. I remember. I can't remember why. <laughs> right, uh, section five point two two. It does not file. It does not follow from the file submitted by the respondent that the treatment plans have been drawn up and treatment goals formulated periodically and frequently, as is customary within the profession. Oh, he was literally just dating her and charging her for dating her. He was charging her to have her as his call up waifu. 
It also does not follow from the file whether, and if so, what progress has been made in the treatment and which goals have been achieved. If it, it is true that the complainant and the defendant do not fully agree with each other on how many treatment plans have been drawn up, discussed and evaluated, but even if the point of view taken by the defendant is assumed, this cannot be said to have taken place in the usual manner within the profession. So there the board are saying even Ono's argument of no, her view of this is wrong, they're like, but it doesn't matter, You're even if, even if she's not right, your retelling of events is still, it's still wrong. Yeah, I th say classic patriotism is, but, but in many ways, this is why I say many of us here are probably more patriotic than most patriots, because many of us here want growth and change. And what, what, what is more patriotic than believing your country can do better and wanting your country to do better, the country that you live in? Like, really, what is more patriotic than that? Surely that's the height of patriotism. To believe your country can do better and want it to. What is stated under 5.21 and 5.22 is in itself incorrect. But all the more reprehensible now that the defendant was in any case already at the start of the disputed period. In fact, as has been argued in the defence and by the defendant at the hearing from the start of the treatment, there was a perception that the treatment provided was ineffective. The defendant describes this idea in his defence as follows. He had the feeling that the treatment perpetuated, perpetuated and even aggravated the intense suffering of the complainant. He felt like he was making her worse. However, he did not terminate the treatment until the end of 2015. The re treatment relationship until the end of 2015. When he had become completely exhausted, mainly as a result of the treatment of the complainant, and suffered from panic attacks. <laughs> It is true that the defendant has repeatedly made attempts also on the advice of colleagues to end the treatment relationship. The defendant has, the defendant has even entered therapy himself. And whilst doing this, writing his theory of structured association that everyone maps to. But he was unsuccessful. This is because he always feared serious consequences for the complainant, a fear which, moreover, according to the defendant, was expressly stated at the hearing which was based on his asset assessment and not on threats made by the complainant. Oh, a fear which he himself expressly stated at the hearing was not based on any threats made by her. She never threatened to kill herself. She never threatened self-harm. He just formed this fear by himself through his own assessments. She never actually threatened to do anything bad if he cut off her treatment. He just, even though he knew he was making a worse, refused to cut off treatment for his own fears. This is self-report the, 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 the person. Why are they all such creepy fucking self-reporting nonces? Like, motherfucker. Motherfucker literally looks like Remy Acrone. Like a dead-eyed, sunken-eyed gonna eat your babies kind of creep like he's skull he's basically just he's oh have we found skeletal like he has bones that the human being that's like a perfect skull right there very palpatine as well oh look who's on his bookshelf oh speak of the fucking devil Look who's on his bookshelf! I only recognise that book. His granddad has that book. Nice no, fucking Winston Churchill. Oh, he looks like Prince Philip. <gasps> he does look like Prince Philip. Oh, fuck. Mate, this could literally be my granddad's bookshelf. That's creepy. He does. Oh, it's all young photos of Prince Philip now. He's died. Look at that. That's oh, my God. He, like... They're both such Sith Lords. They're such Sith Lords. Oh, mate.
you know, you sometimes hear in movies that line and it's often a cruel line like, you stole 20 years of my life from me. You, I wasted all this time with you sort of thing. But I bet you that woman does feel that way and rightfully so. She did. I feel horrible for her. She had 20 years of her life stolen by this fucking shriveled bullsack. This is what it is. Same as Remy Akron. These fucking... Who's, who's self-report pedo, don't forget. These fucking nonce defending thus probable potential nonces. These fucking nonce incel creeps back in the 80s and early 90s worked out how to finally get laid. Find women with trauma. <laughs> you know? Develop your hypnosis bullshit and and hypnotize a, a, a girl with trauma into being your waifu. That's that's gotta be the game plan, right? That's what they're all doing, isn't it? We know it. We literally know it. Unspoken fact, male DID psychologists are in it for the waifus. <laughs> and they collect girls with DID like waifus in a gacha game. Normally, this one just specialised on one. And off the back of one, literally him with her since 1985... Basically, you know, treating three to five times a week and then marrying them, like, from 80s, from the 80s, and then in 2010, he writes this theory of structural dissociation. We have to keep these numbers and everything we're going to continue reading in mind. I'm sorry I keep stressing that, but I need it in your brains when we hit the theory of structural dissociation after this. Though it appears from the file that the defendant regularly consulted colleagues with the question of how he could improve the treatment. It does not show that he actually made use of a structured form of intervention or intervision as is customary within the profession. He didn't have anyone supervising. He didn't use supervision, I think, is what they wanted there. In view of the very long and complex problem at issue and the problems that the defendant himself experienced, the defendant should have known, especially now that he is an expert in the field of feedback, that simply asking for advice or help does not provide sufficient guarantees for a proper analysis of the problem and a good sight into one's own actions. Now you need your colleagues monitoring you. That's why you so often have psychs sitting in with each other. Constantly reviewing each other's work. Constantly. That's why they always go away to their teams to discuss your diagnosis before making a formal diagnosis. They have to have self-review systems in place. To breed out corruption. To get rid of it. They cannot have this form of negligence, malpractice and corruption. And anywhere you find people like Valerie Sinison who, when asked if a patient of theirs reported to have not just paedophilic feelings, but the desire to act upon them, and was going and told Valerie Sinison that they were going to act in a paedophilic way soon, she would not report that to the police or another colleague. And she would handle it all by herself. She would not she would not share her treatment of patients with anyone else ever. She does not believe in a review system of that nature. Like, this. Oh, you haven't, you haven't, you obviously haven't watched all my videos. The Valerie Sinison self report, one of my more recent ones. Definitely watch, definitely watch the Valerie Sinison self report. That's one of our masterpieces from from this stream, from these streams, no doubt. Ugh. Serious Andrew Wakefield vibes. Yeah. Yeah. You start watching it and have to not get all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a boring one at the start. And then it gets worse and worse. It was really boring. We were all so bored at first. And then it's towards the end that the 
self-reporting happens. It's just <laughs> fucking grim, that one. That was fucking... The shit she says is disgusting. I'm gonna... I need to, like, retweet. Like, I made a 40-second video out of that, I remember. I need to, like, just retweet that every, every month or so. <laughs> just to remind people every month or so that, you know, Valerie Sinison believes in her power to treat pedophiles and people with a violent it was also, yeah it was if they had a violent if somebody had a violent pedophile altar and they were scared that's it they was if a patient came to them they were scared that their violent pedophile altar was going to commit a crime a sinus and wouldn't deal with that by herself it's all good she got it she'll talk to your altar she'll calm them down Yeah, 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 and then we and then we we got into the self safeguarding and stuff, and literally here in the UK where she works, actually child safeguarding laws and such. That's one of the few places when they're a direct threat of harm to national security or another person's life or of paedophilic action is reported to a doctor. That is where patient doctor confidentiality actually runs out. There is no patient doctor confidentiality for threats of violence pedophilic actions or national security there it doesn't exist in those instances so in fact you're legally obligated to report on them so she can literally in minecraft <laughs> throw herself in a deep ocean and swim to the nether Meet all the Satanists there. Yeah. Yeah. Have Valerie Silence and party with the Satanists. That's what I want. In my darkest moments, I sometimes think that. And it would link back to also why. The real thing they do, the real thing we've noticed, especially from the likes of Remy, Colin, Sinuson, they don't teach their patients how to cope with the ID. They don't teach their patients how to get better. They don't give them therapy or treatment. They teach their patients the rhetoric to spread. They teach their patients that, that copy-paste line we were talking about earlier. That's what they get. All right. Right. Transgressive behavior. This complaint can be broadly divided into two parts. One part concerns the way in which the treatment took place, the way in which the defendant involved his own problems in the treatment and the giving of gifts, and the part of the complaint has already at the part of the complaint has already been discussed above and does not require a separate discussion. The defendant has not acknowledged that this course of action was incorrect. With regard to the other part of the complaint relating to physical contact. So, basically, everything that the, the, the complainant alleges, have you noticed this? He, ad he admits. Now, where he, where he contradicts the complaint regarding physical contact and the making of unexpected home visits, the board considers that the defendant has acknowledged that embraces and hugs took place after the therapy sessions. Uh, so again, he admits that he used to hug and embrace, not just hug, but embrace. Um, you know, And again, when we're using legal language, the fact that they've got the two distinctions would imply a difference in severity. You know, probably a hug is quick and an embrace that does, we know what embrace means, it's more lovingly. Um, he explained that the termination of the sessions was extremely difficult due to the complainant's trauma. He wanted to use these actions to show that he was there for her, to offer her comfort, and to show her compassion. No worries, Twilight. You take easy. You take it easy. Maybe catch you later. No worries, buddy. Um... 
He wanted to use these actions to show that he was there for her, to offer her comfort and to show her compassion. The defendant acknowledged in the statement of defense and at the hearing that he should not have expressed his intentions in this way. Furthermore, the defendant has not denied that there were unexpected home visits. On this basis, on the basis of this, this part of the complaint is also well founded now that it can now that it concerns actions that are not in accordance with the standards applicable in the profession. So guilty on all charges so far. With regard to the complaint referred under 31 sub C concerning violation of professional secrecy. Oh, you're uh, what do you mean? The commission considers as follows. The complaint relates to the violation of professional secrecy by the defendant towards his wife and towards a colleague. Defendant admitted that he violated his professional secrecy towards his colleagues. He asked the colleague to take over the complainant's treatment and discuss the complainant's situation without the complainant's prior consent and mentioned her name. So he didn't just say, I have a patient that I have been treating. This is the broad situation which they can do. Would you be willing to take over it? if I get her consent to give you further information. That would be one thing. No, he explicitly discussed the nature of her illness and used her name. That does break patient, doctor patient confidentiality. You can't, your GP and stuff, they have these records for a reason. There's a reason why there's so much giving of permission and to writing so that it's all got evidence to back it, you know. Uh, there is, in Europe and the UK anyway, and also in America, you've got your HIPAA rights. This is literally the stuff that your HIPAA rights are about, the sharing of your personal information in the medical field. It's nothing to do with vaccine admission. It's, it's everything to do with this sort of shit. <sighs> Furthermore, the defendant has taken the position that he requested and obtained permission to let his wife read a so-called second opinion about the further treatment of the complainant. He was getting his wife's help and to make a number of procedural agreements with his wife regarding the complainant's therapy, including matching the defendant's family vacations to the complainant's therapy. The complainant contested the defendant requested and obtained this permission. She didn't just, you know, she wasn't her idea or anything. He was there nagging her probably to do it, wanted her to do it, made her feel like she had to do it. The board agrees with the complainant's position because the medical file offers no indications for the correctness of the defendant's position. Thus, this part of the complaint is therefore also well founded. Mm, guilty on all charges so far, still. Yeah, it's literally like it's on a it's on a like a nurse, a professional by professional basis with some things when it comes to your medical history, you know? That's why I really hate things like the CMHT, where they don't, I don't, the CMHTs do not stick to this stuff. Although maybe they do, which is why also every time you see a new nurse, you have to repeat the exact same shit to them and they ask the exact same questions every time. So maybe they are, I don't know. I'm always like, have you not read my record? And they're like, read what I can. I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, no, that makes sense now. With regard to the complaint referred to under 3.1 sub D concerning incorrect file formation, the commission considers as follows. Statement of defense. The defendant put forward that the complainant's accusation that the file is not complete because there were no emails in it is justified. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> he regrets that not all correspondence has been included in the file. He is also no longer able to re-enter. He is also no longer able to enter these emails because he deleted the email correspondence of the complainant from his computer. Oh, isn't that handy? Fucking scumbag. He did not contest in the statement of defense or at the hearing that two files had been filed. There was a personal file and an office file. The personal file contains matters about the treatment. Oh my God, in particular relating to the defendant's marriage. Oh my God, that are not included in the official file. It is incorrect that the email correspondence conducted is not included in the file and is contrary to what is accepted in the profession that two files concerning the same client are kept. In this way, when the client is transferred, it is not guaranteed that all relevant... It's, it's guaranteed that he gives them the professional file and keeps his own kink file to himself. <gasps> Thus, this is also well-founded. This complaint wins. 
Complaint 31 sub E concerning incorrect reporting. This part of the complaint relates to the letters from the defendant to and among others the complainant's general practitioner. The commission does not share the complainant's view that the letters written in this context contain incorrect, incomplete, and one-sided information. The defendant has described the complainant's problem and his role in the treatment in an insightful manner. The fact that such letters, which are written after more than 20 years of treatment, do not contain all information at a detailed level of what happened during this treatment does not make these letters inaccurate, incomplete, or one-sided. Okay, that's interesting. It feels like... What? So just because... I don't think this is even a fail... This isn't even a translation issue, this. This is literally me having a brain malfunction at how the court... At how the commission decided that one. That's literally like me just having, this is my brain aneurysm moment, that, that, that they found that the letters, even if they do not contain all information at a detailed level of what happened during this treatment, doesn't make them inaccurate, incomplete, or one-sided. But they were factually incomplete. I'm I'm so confused to how they decided that one, honestly. I don't understand how that one works at all in the slightest there. I'd love Legal Eagle in my head, right? I'm gonna like send this to Legal Eagle, start spamming them on Twitter, being like, please can you explain this to me? <laughs> right. Oh, right, of course, because the letters literally cannot have all info because that would then be considered uh, right. No, I get you. Uh, it's a very fiddly one, isn't it? Yes, no, I totally get you. Totally get you. Yeah. Right, with regard to the complainant referred to under 3.1 sub F uh, regarding not being adequately referred, uh, they also found that complaint is therefore ineffective. Um, so the complainant refused to cooperate. This cannot be blamed on the defendant. Can it wait? So the board does not follow that the complainant's position that the defendant acted carelessly and inadequately by suddenly discontinuing the therapy at the end of 2015 and that by his name recognition appearances and refusal to disclose matters, he made it impossible for the complainant to ever receive the correct treatment again from another therapist. Oh. You see, I think history would disagree with you, mate. He's... I, I fucking all know Amanda Hart's pretty well known. I don't know. This is because it must not be forgotten that the sudden discontinuation of the therapy was the result of the defendant's illness. No. The sudden discontinuation of the therapy is thanks to the existence of the therapy, which is entirely thanks to Ono van der Hart's malpractice. Again, I don't understand how they can reach a conclusion like this after forming the other prior conclusions. How can you find the other conclusions are well-founded and then not take that into account with this? This isn't, though. This is about a medical board. This is what I get annoyed as, as well, because I say court. It's a, it's, I, I'm wrong in where I've been saying it's the Ono van der Hart court hearing. It was the Ono van der Hart disciplinary case where he lost his medical license and the ability to practice as a doctor. He can still practice as Ono van der Hart, just can't call himself Dr. Ono van der Hart when practicing anymore. Um because he was disbarred. But she never actually took him to court. It was a disbarring hearing. Um, and so it's doctors and shit. It's not, it's, it's doctors who know a lot about precedent and practice and whatnot, but they're not lawyers in general, the people who sit on a disciplinary board, are they? They're normally seniors and members of the faculty. I would think, and maybe an advisor, maybe an advisory lawyer for a case like this, I imagine. Most hospitals or clinics would have a lawyer. This is because it must not be forgotten that the sudden defendant's illness. The, def the defendant has attempted to obtain clarity for the complainant about what 
a good further treatment option could be through a second opinion with two colleagues who are specialized in examining how stored treatment processes can best be continued. However, the complainant refused to cooperate with that. Mm. But can you blame her for refusing to cooperate with his colleagues at this point? This cannot be blamed on the defendant. I can blame it all on the defendant because she's been groomed and brainwashed for 20 years. That's that's my difference, I guess. I'm not, again, I'm not a professional and I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a doctor. I'm an angry man who can see injustice getting ignored. <laughs> it doesn't, it, it's not right. We know it's not right. We know on a moral and intelligence rationality based level, any decision she was making after 20 years of such intensive treatment at his hands cannot be placed fairly in her hands, right? Somebody with severe mental illness who has been abused by their therapist for 20 years cannot be held fully accountable for the decisions they're making as an adult, right? They would be considered vulnerable, you'd hope, by law. rage but then she'd have to get herself classified as a vulnerable person first it's complex isn't it fuck i hate it i know law and morality are not the same again we were discussing this the other day regarding written house and watching league legal he himself said it the law and morality are not the same the law is about precedent not about what feels right Sometimes it feels really wrong. The board has found no evidence of abuse of his name recognition or of his professorship by the defendant. Yeah, maybe not back then, but the fact that his name is still one of the most famous people in the realms of DID treatment, despite this having happened, says something different to me. It says to me that he can abuse his name recognition. <sighs> but maybe not in a way that that would affect her future treatment. She could, I guess my main issue with that argument would be that should she leave his treatment and then move to America or something, she'd be able to find treatment from a therapist maybe who doesn't know his name. You're in the UK, you know. Not every therapist is going to know or know Van der Haar's name, so it's a name recognized within did fields. But then again, if she's looking for a did therapist, ah! Sometimes studying things from every angle gives me a headache. That's where I ask you guys, what do you think? Right. Regards to the measure to be imposed, the board considers the following. There has been a very long treatment relationship of almost 21 years in total. The last 10 years can certainly be considered extraordinarily complex. The complainant was fully convinced that the defendant was the only practitioner who could help her. The defendant has certainly been in a position in the last 10 years in which he knew that he had to end the treatment relationship because he failed to achieve proper treatment, but was unable to do so. Not even ask, asking colleagues for advice and involving colleagues in the treatment. Defendant continued with the treatment knowing, as he himself expressed this, that his treatment perpetuated and even aggravated the intense, the intense, it perpetuated and even aggravated the intense suffering of the complainant. The man who wrote the theory of Dissociation, structure, the, stru the theory of structural dissociation on Ovanda Hart. Everyone faps to. You can't help but post all over fucking Twitter and Instagram all the time. Admits that his method of treating somebody who experiences from those problems, he admits that it caused, it perpetuated and aggravated the in intense suffering maybe this is why all these people with DID that keep espousing shit like Conor Van der Haar aren't getting better um uh, da, 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 da. there we got the so <laughs> snail snail farmer just listen to this bit defendant continued with the treatment knowing as he himself expressed this that his, tr his treatment perpetuated 
and even aggravated the intense suffering of the complainant. Mono van der Hart himself admitted and expressed that his treatment was making his one patient over these 20 years, her intense suffering, he was making it worse. And off the back of that, he wrote the theory of structural dissociation. Like, what? Huh? How? Why does anyone listen to it for shit? It may resonate, it may sound good, it may sound logical, but just because it does, doesn't make it true. It doesn't sound very logical when you start trying to explain magnets, to be honest. Gravity doesn't even sound very logical when you start trying to explain it. A lot of science doesn't sound good. That's why flat earthers exist, because they believe the thing that's easy to understand and sounds good. That's why conspiracies exist, because people end up believing the easy to understand thing that sounds good, like the theory of structural dissociation. And that's not to discredit anyone's intelligence here, because where it regards your mental illness, you needed something. You all needed something, I get it. And so you're going to cling to the first thing that sounds good. And is supported by his peers, peers such as Remy Akron, paedophile defender, who was with him as co-chair in the ISSTD, like Valerie Sinison, you know, the creator of the Satanic Panic in the UK and linked to the murder and disappearance of, of Carol Felstead, uh, who's also on the board of the ISTD at the same time as him. You know, these were his friends whilst he was doing this sort of shit. Like, we just need to fucking ignore it all from now on. So whenever people are like, yeah, but, you know, this is actually how DID works. And I'm like, where did you, re well, tell me, how do you know that? And they're like, because theory uh, the theory of structural association i'm like i don't care my hypotheses it'd be more accurate to call it hypotheses you cannot form a theory off of one case study that's a hypothesis my hypotheses are just as relevant and accurate as any of these motherfuckers are because i speak to you guys on twitch for up to 10 hours a day not just one person with the id <laughs> many <laughs> i don't know how many <laughs> i don't know how many have messaged me left comments and shared their experiences with me and because of that and because there's been no formality to it i could never actually truly write a theory or a study on it but i can have a hypothesis the same as any of these cunts can have a hypothesis and not one of them is it, one of them has come up with an accurate theory they're all fucking hypotheses and where they will peer review each other's work how can we... I literally, I hate it. Yeah, peer-reviewed shouldn't mean you got your Christian fundamentalist mates to read it for you. But it is what it means currently in the world of DID. And anyone who wants to argue, no, it's not, I can prove you wrong. That's what we've been trying to do. That's I don't want to disprove the ID as a diagnosis. I want to formalize it properly and get it away from the... Christian fundamentalist nonsense. It's so important if any of you ever want to get better that we do that. If if the person who has the most supported theory out there admits that he made his patient sicker, then why would anyone work on his theory? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I guarantee you we'll find Ono van der Hart's Theory of Structures Association mentioned on any dead website we go on. Any. No! You know, dude, I am so sorry. I feel awful. I'm laughing at it too, a bit in hindsight already, but my God, I feel awful because, bro, I have bipolar. I have bipolar disorder. Yeah. And borderline personality disorder and people mistaking 
people mistaking the two online causes people like you to then get them mixed up. It's not even your fault. I don't, I don't blame me. I don't blame you for this that misunderstanding. It is hilarious. There's no fault. There is no fault to be had, to be honest, because it is hilarious. You know, you're all right. You get it. We're all right. We had a conversation about borderline personality off the back of it. Oh my God. Dude, my heart right now for you. I'm literally tearing up for fuck's sake from laughter and feeling sad because I n n totally get what that must have. Fuck's sake, dude. No. Bipolar bro. Dude, bipolar bro. No, no. No, no. Bipolar is well studied. The chemical imbalance and physical difference in our brain has been studied on more than a thousand patients, tens of thousands of patients, I'm pretty sure. Don't worry. That's legit. Chill. Is any evidence suggesting BPD is real would also just suggest that it's PTSD. BPD, borderline personality disorder. Not manic depressive or bipolar. Oh. Yeah. Oh, everyone but the non bubble smokers can bubbles right now. <laughs> I know you're fine. And again, I'm laughing at it now whilst also feeling mildly terrible, knowing that I didn't do anything wrong and you didn't do anything wrong. As I say, there is no fault. It's just hilarious and sad, but hilarious at the same time. It's, I love it. I totally get it. Brilliant. Perfect. Ah, it's, it's perfect. Ah, the uh, old compulsive bike training. Compulsory bike test. Sorry, compulsory bike test. Of course, right. Fair enough, Posty. Yeah, it's incredible how they link up so intensely, to be honest. It's... it's... I found out about the satanic panic... Mm. Thanks to the UK's 43rd largest YouTuber and one of the top 500 largest educational YouTubers in the world, Chloe Wilkinson and her DID. You know, it's been, it's so incredible how those two things get linked up. And it's again, why part, see, you'll understand then that this is the reason for me trying so thoroughly to destroy the likes of Ono van der and Valerie Sinison and Remy Akron, because if I can destroy their work and their theories, we can give people who have experienced serious trauma, serious neglect, and have a serious mental health condition a correct diagnosis one day. I'm not going to be the one that works that out, but as I say, I assume it's going to be renamed one day something like PTSD too, because that is the least offensive term. People can say DID is less stigmatizing than MPD, but they're both stigmatized terms. They are. Whereas PTSD too would be a very neutral term that would carry zero stigma attached to it. Actually. So, you know, it's, and then learning of, exactly, and then us learning about how QAnon was started by this ship before even mainstream media was talking about that. It's amazing. Like the, the, the journey we've gone down this last year is amazing, truly. Good night, Angie. You take it easy. Glad having you about. <laughs> fuck your fucking app for fucking you fuck all the time. Fuck Clary's streaming app. Everyone hate Clary's streaming app. Suck iPhone. I'm guessing you're on the iPhone. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it's only through the satanic panic has been tr tried to be debunked so many times. And the problem is, is where it falls flat 
or where it offends people in this modern day is where people with DID, who I believe do have DID, feel like their diagnosis is being attacked by some of the more old school uh, fighters of the satanic panic, those who learn about memory, the memory, the memory wars, the memory wars. Those who endured the memory wars can be slightly less patient and sensitive than I've learned to be recently. Um, I get it. They can't see any of it as being legit ever because of what they saw going on in the 80s and 90s and early 20, 2000s and now happening again. How could they believe any of it? But I am trying to approach it more from the angle of we get the diagnosis of DID away from the, the satniks, away from those cunts, away from those who believe in satanic ritual abuse. If we get this diagnosis away from them, that is what buries satanic ritual abuse. It thrives on the, the, the legitimacy of the voices of traumatized people, in particular women. How dare you deny a traumatized woman? woman's past how dare you? you cannot and i agree with that until they're saying it's satanic ritual abuse but if we can get the professionals who wrote this stuff completely destroyed in the in the public's eye and get the id into the realms of pure medicine and science that will weaken that Bundy group of nut jobs so much, I think. It's a belief I have it could be proven wrong. But I think that would be a fucking hammer blow to the Satnik group. You guys ditching me at midnight. God. Fair enough. <laughs> we'll see about it. <laughs> Got stuff on your desk is now homeless in your living room and it's stressing you out. Oh, for fuck's sake, Trip. Why? Oh, I hate that. When you're like, ah, done. And then you look around and you're like, ah, not done. We really do. I've had a little bit of contact with one on Twitter, but not enough yet. He liked one of my tweets a long time ago. <laughs> one of my tweets about satanic shit. Same guy that's been reporting on some of this stuff for the BBC. That doesn't get enough work. The BBC don't like covering it. Um, it's just when there was that, he, he covered, he covered that woman, um, doing the protest, the anti-vax protest in London, where they were saying we needed Nuremberg trials, for the doctors here in the UK, basically saying we need to kill the doctors in the UK. Um, it's the person who's been covering that shit liked one of my tweets once, but then I sent him a DM and he never replied to my DM, got ghosted. I was terribly offended. I sent them messages to let them know how offended I was that I got ghosted by them. <laughs> of course I wouldn't. <laughs> Who the fuck would do that? Um, moving on. Throw a bomb. Yeah, religious abuse is a much better term, and that would help us deal then with, you know, like actually calling it what it is, the organized, not ritual, but the organized religious abuse that the Catholic Church engages in, the fact that they have a literal fund to defend and protect their pedophiles, same as the Baptist Church and the uh, Presbyterian churches in America and the evangelical churches. You'll have motherfucking pedo defense funds and exorcism units at the, at the Catholic Church in the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> I 
thing is, satanic ritual abuse, right? Satanic ritual abuse is the thing, like the, the definition as written by satanic ritual abuse. There is one definition of satanic ritual abuse. There is only one definition of satanic ritual abuse. People need to stop redefining it. There is a literal legal definition of satanic ritual abuse here in the UK. You know, as regarded by our government and courts. We, we and, and as coined by Valerie Sinison. Valerie Sinison coined the term satanic ritual abuse and ritual abuse. She literally coined those two terms and wrote them in legal documents that were given to our government, coining those terms. She has defined them and people need to stop misdefining them because satanic ritual abuse does not exist, full stop. Doesn't. Unless you watch Hannibal, the, the Netflix series Hannibal, and think everything that happens in that show is real, then satanic ritual abuse does not exist. I'd say what I do here these days is probably freelance journalism, isn't it? <laughs> freelance live stream news journalism, I don't know. <laughs> More news, I'm just coverage. I'm like a news anchor. I need journalists to start doing the work for me. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. So, intense suffering of complaint was perpetuated and aggravated. Certainly in view of the positions he adopts in his books and at conferences, it is incomprehensible that the defendant, in the complex situation in which he found himself, did not provide proper feedback and or intervision, but has sufficed with seeking advice from and involving colleagues in the treatment and has not always followed advice from colleagues until the end of the relationship. I am most ADHD anchor. I'm the AADHD. Uh, no, I'm the ADHDA. I'm the ADHDA. No. Yeah, the ADHDA. Oh, Rose Pun Master. That's a name I've not seen before. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, ostrich shit. Uh, Oh, I don't need to pee, I'm all good. Rejected. I do need to make a coffee in a sec, though. Right. Um. <laughs> in doing so, the defendant did not adhere to the rules and principles applicable to his profession during the hearing. In this regard, the board refers to what has been considered under 5.21 and 5.32 and 5.33, there were, no, there were no minor deviations from what is customary within the profession, but significant, significant and completely unacceptable deviations. No minor deviations, but significant and completely unacceptable. Rose, Rose Pun Master. That's an exciting username. I mean, Lepadia, you were really meant to write something first there. You know, I don't know. That one. I'm, I just need to turn these things off one day. <laughs> So dumb. <laughs> so dumb. Um, right. Although the singing one's fun, but still. In doing so, the def uh, blah, blah, blah. as a pr practitioner, the defendant could, could have been expected to have broken off the treatment relationship at the beginning of the 10-year period at issue in any case. It had clearly been clear, it had already been clear to him for some time that he was not up to the situation, but instead he continued the treatment relationship for 10 years in a way that he knew was definitely inappropriate and harmful to the complainant. I'm literally going to have to get a coffee for this, though, I think. We'll see. Let's blow my nose, too. Bastard. Um, just need to feel the music. Court charges this defendant 
heavy. The defendants request to take into account the enormous complexity of the treatment relationship when imposing a measure and all the attempts he made to get it back on the right track in the opinion of the board it ignores the fact that the defendant as a therapist is responsible no matter how complicated the client's problems and the relationship between client and therapist are nope they're not victim blaming is good that the relationship remains pure and limited as referred to in the professional code it's all on him defendant has been a trainer for many years and thus his conduct is all the more concerning now that the defendant is no longer registered in the big register the imposition of the measure prohibiting re-registration is appropriate he'll never be Professor or Dr. Ron Ovander Hart again, he is disbarred for life, oh yeah. It's the motherfucking big register, the B-I-G register. Defendant's illness at the end of the treatment does not give the board any reason to reach a different conclusion. And this is because the defendant's illness played no role in the very large part of the period to be assessed and the complaints relating in particular to the termination of the treatment relationship are unfounded. The board sees no reason to determine that this decision would take effect immediately because the board is sufficiently convinced that the defendant would not be able to re-register in the big register in the short term. It's hard to wrap it because there's no followable beat. So it's easier just to like do R and B freestyle over lo-fi Zelda music. <laughs> I could opera it. I could go operetta mode. Don't know why I've been doing this R and B voice. Oh yeah. In view of what has been considered above, it is not necessary to discuss what the complainant has argued about. The passing of the prohibition contained in the Big Act to assess conduct that took place more than ten years ago. <laughs> Uh, what other musical styles could we go for? There's, oh, I could go for the falsetto opera. After all, imposing a more far-reaching measure, as is done, is not an option. There's that one. Uh... Yeah, so they don't feel the need to impose a further prohibition because they think it's dealt with. So the decision. Whilst the prosecution was correct in accordance with the law, 
This court finds that the defense was totally awesome and thus dismiss all charges. All charges. Uh, no, they found those to be well-founded, but impose on the defendant the measure of the prohibition of re-registration in the big register. Oh, they did impose it. They did impose upon him that he can't do that and rejects the remainder of the complaint. Mm. Now, where is it? Ah, uh, right. Now, here we get to the article where we learn some further things.